Hey guys, it's Gawain, and today we are going to be taking a look at one of the most versatile operators in Rainbow Six Siege, Mute. Mute is a two-speed, two-armor defense operator that specializes in intel and drone denial with a side of wall denial. Mute has great guns, intel denial, wall denial, drone denial, and site setup potential. Mute requires a good understanding of common drone entryways into each site and how a site should be set up. Let's learn how to play him. Mute is equipped with his Muter routers, of which he gets four. These special devices emit a radio frequency in a 2.25 spherical radius that interrupts drones and other wireless technologies. You can place these radio jammers on the floor and flat horizontal surfaces, such as tables. They take three seconds to deploy, but this shouldn't matter because you should have all of them down by the end of the prep phase anyway. I personally place my muter routers at the side of single wide doorways to prevent drone access through that doorway, as well as protecting the jammer by placing it out of line of sight of the enemy. Try your best to hide your radio jammers because they provide immense value throughout a round if they can't get destroyed, along with frustrating the enemy, which is always a bonus. I normally use three on doorways and staircases around site to prevent drones from coming into site, and then one on main breach to deny the attackers from opening the main wall. However, just note that not all of the wall will be jammed. So it is very easy for fused places close to charges on a wall and destroy your Wi-Fi routers that way. Alongside jamming drones, Mute's jammers disable and prevent a lot of attacker gadgets from being used. You will know that your Mute jammers have jammed something by the point pop-up on the right hand side of your screen. Gadgets such as breach charges, thermite charges, ace charges, fuse charges, and Habana X Kairos pellets cannot be detonated when jammed. Other gadgets such as claymores and air jabs won't be able to detonate when jammed, meaning if you pocket a jammer, you could technically run out on someone, even with a claymore on the window, if you disable it first. Gadgets such as lion scans, finger boosts, Dokubi calls, blitz flashes, and attackers trying to access cameras will all be disabled when in the radius of a mute jammer. This means that if the character is stood within the radius of the mute jammer, then the gadget or action will not be able to happen. Jacker will not be able to see anything through his eye when within the jammer's radius. Furthermore, if you get called by Dokubi, then you can just run into a mute jammer to stop the call. Mute's gadget is very straightforward in terms of deployment and use, but as you can see, it does a whole lot. Mute's primary weapon options are the MP5K submachine gun and the M590A1 shotgun. His secondary weapon options are the SMG11 machine pistol and the P226 Mark 25 handgun. For primary weapons, I alternate depending on what I want to do and what the team needs, as well as the map. For the most part, I bring the shotgun because, let me tell you, the Brexit shotgun absolutely slaps, and it's great for setting up sight as well. Making rotate holes, sight lines, and holes to throw C4s through is a core part of Mute's kit because he has a great shotgun to do so, as well as keeping good fragging potential with it. Hold tight angles with this gun as you are bound to catch an enemy or two off guard whilst you at least down them with one pump each. The Brexit shotty has a good spread with great damage along with good iron sights. It won't let you down. As for a secondary weapon to bring with it, choose the SMG-11 every day of the week. This is one of the best guns in the game, and it is the best sidearm in the game, with an insane fire rate and overall DPS. A good mute player with one of these in their hands is a scary, scary thing. Once you get over the fact that it has a 16 plus one mag size and a lot of recoil, you will love this weapon because it gets you headshots like there's no tomorrow. It also combos well with the M590A1, because it acts as your primary automatic weapon, whilst you can treat the shotgun as a secondary sight setup weapon if you really want to. However, the MP5K is not to be overlooked in the slightest. This gun has minimal recoil, a 1.5x scope, and a fast fire rate, making it a laser beam headshot machine. If you want to roam or just frag out with an easy weapon on mute, then go for the MP5K because it's so easy to use and to get kills with, it is unreal. I love the MP5K because it gives me a break from using the somewhat difficult to control SMG11 and just lets me fry people like I'm cooking an egg. Finally, the P226 is a mid-tier pistol and you should really only use it if you can't control the SMG11 
at all. Just remember, it doesn't matter what I or anyone else uses, if you can't make it work but you can make something else work, then do that instead. Overall, I pair the SMG11 with either the Brexit shotgun if I want to set up sight or get some cheeky one pumps, or the MP5K if I want to go on a roam. In terms of secondary gadgets, Mute gets access to a singular C4 or a bulletproof camera. I personally take the C4 because you can deny plants with it or just get some safe free kills. Anchoring with the C4 means you can throw it on common plant spots within the site when you hear the plant noise to deny it and if you roam with it you can C4 from below or C4 enemies you'd rather not peek again after engaging in a gunfight. Either way, the C4 is a powerful tool which is useful for getting free-ish kills. In terms of the bulletproof camera, you can set it down in a place where enemies will have to use an explosive to get rid of it by making it so they can't shoot it out from the side without peeking one of your teammates or placing it far back enough so that they can't melee it and splinter the glass without doing the same thing. Whilst you can see through smokes and just have general thermal vision, I'd rather take the C4 because that will actually kill the enemy planting, not just mark them. During the preparation phase, focus on getting your radio jammers down as fast as possible because then the attacker drones will struggle to get in, potentially running into a jammer, meaning you can deplete their intel gathering devices right from the get-go. After you've placed your jammers, either make rotate holes and other holes you may need for that site, or get away from the site and go on a roam with your MP5K. After that has been done, the action phase should have already begun. If you're anchoring in the action phase, then just hold some tight angles and wait for the enemy to come to you. If you get called by Dokubi, then run into one of your gadgets. If you are holding a sneaky angle, then try to sit in one of your jammers so you can't get called by Dokubi whatsoever. When you hear the enemy planting, lob a C4 in that direction to hopefully kill them and take a gunfight if necessary. You can take gunfights if you want to, because your primary job gets done during the prep phase when placing your jammers. When roaming, be tricky with it. Never peek the same angle twice and run away if you need to. Remember, wasting their time is a lot better than wasting your life. Try your best to pick up a frag or two, but that isn't a necessity when roaming. Wasting time and good resources is enough, especially if you can deny the plant with your C4. Overall, you can play however you want on Mute in the action phase because his gadget is a set and forget it one, and you have the guns to both anchor and roam. Mute has two counters, IQ and Thatcher. Thatcher's EMP grenades will disable Mute jammers, allowing anything disabled by your gadgets to work again. There isn't much you can do about this because Thatcher's job is literally to get rid of your stuff. So either kill the Thatcher before he can EMP, or just deal with it like a Giga Chad and kill him after his teammates open the wall your jammer was on. IQ can spot your jammers through surfaces and shoot them out. So again, either kill her before that happens, or just deal with it I guess. There's not much you can do against IQ, nor Thatcher. An honourable mention is Twitch, because her zappy drones can kill your radio jammers too, but you can also jam her drones, so she's not a direct counter in my opinion. Place at least one jammer on the main wall to waste attacker resources and time whilst they try and get it off of the wall. Take the SMG11 for the best secondary weapon in the game, providing you with huge fragging potential regardless of your primary weapon choice. Play around your jammers if you know there's a doke beyond the board so you can stop your call as soon as physically possible. Use your C4 to deny plants and get safe kills if you have intel on the enemy's location. Learn to place your gadgets in locations that won't be shot to maximise their effect such as the sides of doorways or around corners. Overall, Mute is a pretty easy operator to play in my opinion. His set it and forget it gadget means you can focus solely on gunfights during the action phase, making it a lot easier when concentrating on your aim. Learn where to put your muter routers, how to control the SMG-11's recoil, which primary weapon suits you best, when to use your C4, and you are sure to become a pretty decent mute player. Thank you all for watching, I do hope you enjoyed. All the clips you saw today were taken from my Twitch stream, so link will be on screen and in the description. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for more content just like this. Gridlock's next for this series, so I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.